Look, there's the academic definition of database normalization, but you can mostly just ignore it. Normalization is super important to understand. It seriously impacts the code that you write in the real world, but the technical category definitions are mostly just an academic exercise. That said, let's go over them in excruciating detail, and I'll give you the actual practical rule of thumb about how to use them at the very end. But first, what is normalization? Well, it's really just the practice of improving the structure or schema of a database so that it has less data redundancy, duplicate data, and more data integrity, which really just means correct data. So to put it simply, we want to store data in its simplest form with no copies, because copies can lead to bugs. For example, we might update one copy and forget to update the other copy, which gives us sort of this invalid state. Which one represents the truth? And normalization is a gradient. You can have a database that's more normalized or one that's less normalized. The more normalized the database is, the less duplicate data you have and the more correct the data is likely to be. Now, academics have defined four different normal forms. First, second, third, and voice cod. As we move up from first to second to third to BCNF, the database becomes more and more normalized. Now, each form is just a set of rules. If the data in the database follows the rules, then the database is in that normal form. The rules build on each other. So second normal form has all the rules from first normal form plus some extra. Third normal form has the rules of second normal form, plus some extra, you get the idea. So anyways, let's start with first normal form. It just has two rules. First, every row must have a unique primary key, and two, there can be no nested tables. Now, rule number two is actually pretty easy to follow in practice. Most database systems don't even let you nest tables within each other, with the exception of like maybe embedding some JSON. But to understand rule number one, let's say we have a user's table with two columns, first name and age. And say we have a user in that table, Lane, who's 30. If another user signs up with the same name and age, Lane, 30, we get a duplicate row. And this is what first normal form is supposed to prevent because no duplicate rows are allowed. To fix it, we can just add a unique ID column as the primary key. We'll give the first row one and the second row ID two. Now, these ID numbers would be generated by the application so that they can't be duplicated no matter what the user's name or age is. Okay, so that's first normal form. Now on to second normal form. We still have to follow all the rules of first normal form, but there is one additional rule. All columns that are not part of the primary key must be dependent on the entire primary key not just part of it. And a primary key is usually a single ID column, but you can have a table with a primary key that's a unique combination of two or three or more columns. For example, you might have a user's classes table that maps users to the classes they're in. as a user ID column and a class ID column. User one is in class three, user two is in class four, user one is in class five. Now, there's not much point here in adding a third ID column because the unique combination of user ID and class ID does the job just fine. You can't enroll in the same class twice, that doesn't really make sense. When we use the term primary key in a software engineering sense, we're usually referring to an ID column or maybe a specific combination of columns that we've created a primary key around. But in an academic computer science normalization sense, primary key just means the smallest number of columns that can be used to uniquely identify a row in an actual data set. So say we have a table with three columns, first name, last name, and first initial. And then we have Lane Small, first initial L, Lane Brewer, first initial L, and Alan Small, first initial A. Now this table technically follows first normal form because there are no duplicate rows and no nested tables, but it doesn't follow second normal forms rules. None of the columns can be a primary key by themselves because none have completely unique values, but we can choose a pair that creates a unique combination like first name and last name. Now with that definition of a primary key in mind, let's read the rule again. All columns that are not part of the primary key in this case, just first initial, must be dependent on the entire primary key, not just a part of it. The problem is that first initial is entirely dependent on just the first name column, which is a part of the primary key, not the whole primary key, so we've broken the rule. So to solve this, we can create a new table and move the first initial column there. It's a mapping table of first name to first initial. So we've got Lane, L, Alan, A. And on our first table, we just drop that first initial column. Now both tables follow the rules of second normal form. And if we need to look up 
a first initial by the user's name, we just use that second table to do so. Now we don't have a duplicate mapping of lane to L. We only store that relationship once. Now this may seem like a really silly example. Why would you store an initial alongside a name? You could just calculate it when you need it. And it is, it is kind of a simple example, but there are times in the real world where you will have a column it kind of depends on another column. And rather than storing it many, many times, you can extract it out into another table. Now on to third normal form. It follows all the rules of first and second normal form, but now adds one additional rule. All the columns not in the primary key must be dependent only on the primary key. Let's go back to the same example, but add a unique primary key column. ID. So we've got one lane small L, two lane brewer L, three Allen small A. Now you might think that this is the same problem as before, and it kind of is, but technically this table does follow second normal form because first initial is dependent on first name, and first name is not part of the primary key anymore because that's the new ID column. But fundamentally, we're still duplicating data. We know lane maps to L, and we don't need to store that relationship twice. This table breaks third normal form because a column not in the primary key, first initial, is dependent on another column not in the primary key, first name. And again, we can solve this by moving the first name to first initial mapping to a separate table. Okay, last normal form, voice cod normal form. It adds one final rule. A column that is part of the primary key may not be dependent on a column that is not part of the primary key. It's important to note that voice cod normal form or BCNF was invented after first, second, third normal forms once they realized that there was still a way for duplicate data to slip into tables, even if a table followed third normal form. For voice cod normal form to matter, the database has to be in a very specific state. Say we have a table with four columns, release year, release date, sales, and name. And we fill it up with all of this data. In this table, we have several possible candidate primary keys. Name could be the primary key on its own, or it could be a combination of release year and sales. The date column could also be a candidate primary key on its own. If we choose the combination of release year and sales as our primary key, the problem is that release year is fully dependent on the release date column. So we have a column in the primary key that is dependent on a column that's not part of the primary key. That doesn't break second or third normal form, but it does create duplicate data and voice cod normal form fixes this edge case. Again, it says a column that's part of the primary key cannot be entirely dependent on a column that's not part of the primary key. Now, one way to fix this is to store year, month, and day in separate columns. But honestly, we could just get rid of the release year column entirely because we already have the more specific date column. Okay, so these were the technical definitions, the academic definitions of first, second, third, and voice cod normal forms. But here's what I want you to remember as a real world software engineer, not a computer science academic. Unless you have a really, really good reason usually performance related, don't denormalize your data. Try to keep it as normalized as possible. And for the most part, we just want full normalization. Voice cod normal form, which when you ignore all of the other categories, we can talk about it much more simply. Just don't store redundant data. There should only be one way to represent the state that you're trying to represent in your database schema. Add unique primary key ID columns, and if you do that, you'll be just fine.